Hey guys, we're here at IDR in Fountain Hills, or Italian Design and Racing, and today I'm here with Michael Carpenter to look at a variety of different race cars that you guys just purchased, right? Yeah, yeah, so uh, we, uh, we at IDR, we've been racing uh, vintage Ferraris for a little over 30 years with mostly 308s, uh, and so we're very excited to start running these uh, 550 Marinello uh, GTS, GT1 cars. Um, and we, uh, we found these cars uh, back in Italy, um, just a little north of Rome uh, last year, and we bought them, you know, just basically we committed to them when I was there because it was one of those things of a um, act now or someone else is going to buy them. When in Rome? When in Rome, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's a very fitting statement for uh, the, our situation that we were in. Um, but uh, it was very, uh, it was a very different, uh, as Americans, uh, um, experience uh, mm -hmm. negotiating cars of buying basically their entire race, uh, for, uh, the Ferrari side of their race program. And uh, them speaking next to no English uh, <laughs> and me speaking very little Italian, um, it, was, it was quite the, uh, uh, quite the experience running Google Translate with um, <laughs> trying to negotiate for the cars, but we uh, we did manage to uh, to accomplish them and get them shipped here uh, about four months later, and so it's been a long it's been a long time coming, and uh, we um, we can't wait to start racing them. But this car was done in 2018, and it's a fully FIA documented car. So it, uh, it may s mostly ran hill climbs, and so it didn't run quite anything in vintage um, or in period for them, but it's quite eligible for almost anything that uh, the other, the uh, red car would run, and it ran the Mondardi Historics at Amola back in August. So it, it does have, you know, some history, and it can, it can do um, quite a few different events, so it'll be a good addition to anyone's collection. Yeah, now what are some of the main changes that you've noticed right off the bat that they did to convert this from a street car to a race car? Yeah, yeah, so one of the main things, uh, the, the body is all fiberglass, like a lot of the, the smaller privateer teams would have done. Hi, buddy. Um, the, uh, so it, it's, it's not a carbon car like a, like a pro drive. Uh, but it also had a much lower budget than running a pro drive car. Uh, the engine is still uh, stock running the original ECUs, um, which it's still actually, you have to run the immobilizer, which is attached to the inside of the car uh, to still maintain uh, being able to fire it up, which is kind of <laughs> interesting. And That's race car uh, stuff. Yeah, of course, because race car. Uh, and when they came in the containers, uh, the little sliding glass window, normally you could, you could roll yourself through the windows, the sliding glass you can't get in. So it, uh, it's a pull the door off and uh, it was attached to the back of the car in the container. Um, so those will be assembled later. These will be assembled later. These are literally just how they came off the truck less than an hour ago. So, uh, still the Italian dirt. Yeah, all of the and various all of the sponsors seed. and stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a pretty fascinating car. Is, do you know if this is a, like, a cabin vent for yes. cooling while racing? Yeah, so this is a cabin vent, um, and they're actually very effective. Uh, we had one for the first time uh, on a uh, Lancia Stratos replica that we did, oh, okay. uh, one of the Lister Bell cars, and it worked really, really well for the small cabin. So um, here in Arizona, it's going to be a necessary uh, feature for the car. So Singular wiper blade, and we noticed the... Uh, front and rear splitters and diffusers are actually all wood as well, right? Yes, yeah, so it's one of those things. Uh, the, they were effective, it was competitive, so uh, you can't really argue with results. It's not necessarily the most, uh, um, what you would think of for a material choice, but you know, like I said, you can't, 
can't argue with the results. I mean, yeah, I mean, these <laughs> days, even a lot of newer factory cars, right? We yeah. sort of talked off camera about how yeah. even the Super Travail cars still feature wood to protect some of the yeah. carbon bodywork that skin. is on those. Mm -hmm. And those are all copied cars that are mass produced way yeah. more than these yeah. are. Yeah. So it still gets used. Um, yeah. It's just a little bit more prevalent on this car than uh, the others. Absolutely. And it's small manufacturer, small mom and pa shops in a, you know, and really this place was in the middle of middle of nowhere Italy. So I mean, it's not, not tons of, of uh, factory options of, of the, uh, the fabrication options that we have everywhere here in the States. Right, so let's talk about the red car that's sitting behind here. Yes, so the red car we are, uh, we are keeping for primarily the historic factor of it. Uh, this car was built uh, originally in 2006 uh, and has been raced uh, ever since. And we have, we have been going through all of the race history of the car and we have over nine confirmed podium class wins for it. Which is incredible. It's just insane. Um, all from uh, GTS and quite a few endurance events. So it pretty well, it by far out of the three cars, it's, it's by far the best of the, of the three. Uh, it has, you know, the history is just, it's incredible. Uh, and from the center lock wheels, it, it needed them for those endurance events. Uh, the giant front brakes, it's, it's just it's a very well prepped car. And just like the green car, it still maintains the factory ECU, factory immobilizer with the key fob attached to the dash. <laughs> <laughs> and what's interesting is, is, you know, obviously the cars are slightly different that were kind yeah. of adapted for what they were used for racing wise, but there's also a ton of similarities, yeah. right? So some of the spoiler mounts and yeah. such are slightly different on this one, but you can tell that they're the same base that would have been used for this car as well. Absolutely. They both have air jacks along with uh, quick releases for a lot of the trunks and the hoods and stuff of the cars as well. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and the, the spares package for these cars has been, uh, it will be very helpful. Um, <laughs> hopefully we won't need them, but you know, rubbing is racing. So um, we're, we are not, we now with the spares can, can not be afraid of uh, where are we gonna get the parts to put this thing back together. <laughs> Yeah, I love uh, because this came from Italy, all the uh, Italian sponsors, right? Absolutely. Nothing's necessarily in English for the most part. And here's the sliding window. Uh, you yeah. can't necessarily fit through that, can you, if it's no, in a transporter? No, not, not a <laughs> chance. Not a chance. <laughs> no, so. at least uh, normal people uh, could be able no. to fit through that. Maybe an Italian could. Uh, there's a there's a chance. Maybe. There's very, a chance. Very, <laughs> very young ones, yeah. Um, what's interesting so. is it looks like the, the front bumper on this car is slightly different as well. Yeah, so that is one of the things that is kind of interesting between these cars that I believe only the hood is the, is the uh, contributing um, uh, factor that's consistent between all the cars. Um, the fenders and the uh, the front bumpers, quarter panels, they're all slightly different. So <laughs> maintaining what is, what is really going on, you know, we are, we're going to have to pick one of the cars to, uh, for the missing body parts, uh, which one we like, pull some molds so that again, we can maintain what they are. Yeah, it's also interesting seeing the headlight changes and such as well, but. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, they, uh, as design development, um, it really shows kind of what time was spent on, on which projects. Um, so we're, you know, there's a lot of things that we're gonna continue to maintain. Obviously these cars, we, they did come with uh, title paperwork, so we will be, uh, road registering them, so the headlights will be a necessary feature, <laughs> but the, uh, we may have to make some small changes depending on how, uh, um, how effective they actually work. <laughs> and now what's going on with the yellow one that we have back here? So the yellow car is kind of the biggest question mark for us. Uh, it was a all or nothing situation for buying these cars. So we, we did, um, we're not quite sure what 
is going to happen with them if we're going to maintain it into building a race car or build it into a road car uh, with a uh, civilized roll cage in it or <laughs> you know what to do with it. Uh, so if anybody wants it, we can build it how you want it. They can send you guys a message. <laughs> exactly. And so what is the best way to get a hold of you guys if somebody was interested in either taking a look or pur purchasing one of these cars or even enlisting you guys in yeah. your services? Because obviously yeah. you can see some of the cars in the background. You guys do more than just yeah. buy yeah. and sell yeah. with we, uh, uh, Ferraris. Our primary business is uh, vintage Ferrari restoration, custom fabrication, and engineering. So we, we are on uh, social media with Instagram at IDR87. Uh, or you can go to our website at italiandesignandracing.com. Perfect. Well, with that, thank you very much. Obviously, yeah. these cars are incredible. So the yellow yeah. one is sort of for sale. They can yeah. reach out with questions. The green one will definitely be for sale. And then the red one may be coming to a racetrack near you, right? Depending on what you guys end up Absolutely. Uh, getting it ready for. Absolutely. So with that, that's going to be the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, could hit the thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. And consider getting subscribed for content like this in the future. With that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.